Jiminy Crickets! Hi, Ryan. What's hedging in? What's hedging in? What's hedging in? How are you? What's up, man? Hi, it's the What If Podcast. My name's Spencer. His name's Ryan. Yup. This Those is, are uh, facts. This is the time of the week where we hang out at my house and talk about dumb shit. New year, new us. What's up, everybody? <laughs> I think you said that last week. But now it's true. <laughs> well, no, no, we wait. haven't talked to these people in a while, man. Did we? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. I know I'm right. I was <laughs> Let's <thinking> of- <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got confused with our Patreon friends. That's okay. Hmm. Sorry, yeah, we haven't done this here podcast in a couple weeks. Been a hot minute. What's up, everybody? Mm, we got no smarter since the last time we spoke. Garen fucking T it. <laughs> Garen fucking T it. Well, I apologize. I do apologize for that. But you know what? We're at an age now where like it ain't going to get much better <laughs> or different. This podcast or us as human beings? I meant like our general intelligence level is not oh, going to. Well, it's not, not going to. Not with that attitude. Ah. I don't think with any attitude, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, you know, we did our learning. I mean, we're still going to learn things, that's, but yeah, that's a terrible way of looking at things. I just meant like, you know, the, we, we're bad on the basics and, <laughs> and, and there's no way to go back and do the basics again. Yeah, fair you enough. know, like I, I'm not going to take high school biology on like oh, I see. Coursera I see. or like fucking whatever yeah. online biology class I could take. Yeah. So I'm just always going to be dumb at that going forward. Yeah. I got That's e- what I'm talking about. I got an email today from Berkeley online education, whatever the hell they're called. Please tell me they want us to teach a weird people show. No, please. no, no. Oh, come they, on, man. They, they want me to learn how to do music from them. And mm, I was like, you know, this is significantly less cool than what I hoped it was. I probably should have done that at some point. Oh, learn how to do music? Yeah. Yeah, you did fine. But now, now you don't need now it. I pro- now it would be like, I have to take time to stop doing the thing that I'm doing to go learn how to do the thing that I'm doing. Somebody. So what I'm saying is, as as much as we don't know, we have turned not knowing shit into a, a pretty decent podcast. You know what? You're right. Let's just keep going. You're right. You're right. I did see, uh, speaking of school, I did see somebody say, uh, what was the craziest thing you did with money in the past decade? It was like somebody looking at the last 10 years and a bunch of people were quoting the tweet and saying it or in like saying their response. And this one guy was like, uh, th- the craziest thing he did for money in the last decade was take out a big ass loan to get a job to pay off his big ass loan or something like that. And I was right. like, you right. <laughs> you right. Yep. A yep. lot of us did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's just be grateful you didn't take out a big ass loan to get your art degree, and then take out another big ass loan to go oh, get dude, your Berkeley I, degree. I wouldn't be here if I had done that. I don't know what that means. I'd have some other different terrible job, and that probably would have killed me by now. <laughs> right. If I'd come out of That's art school in two thousand eight with also like a hundred grand in debt, right? I'd just be dead by now. <laughs> That was like the only thing. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, and going to a public university that yeah, that cost helps. six thousand dollars a year when that I helps. started. That helps. Uh, but yeah, if if I had started in a in like the worst recession of the last hundred years with an art degree, a <sighs> mm. hundred grand in the hole, mm. I don't think I'd be here. That was like Loki, exactly me. <laughs> I for sure were. I did an English degree with a three years of private school education Ugh. behind it, so. I not, for sure not super far away. would not own the building that we're currently recording in. <laughs> hey It's a house it's with, true. with nice microphones in it. It's true. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a new year, man. 2020. We're back for a hell of a lot more weird. Spencer and I got a little little rest and relaxation. A little, uh, little bricky break. Bricky break. And now we're, uh, we're back to get weird with our buds. Hi, buds. You, you doing anything different this year? I think I have a resolution. Sick. What do you got? This year, I'm going to bike a 50-mile race. Okay. I'll never do a marathon because I hate running more than anything in the whole wide world, but I really like biking. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I'm going to set a goal for myself to bike a 50-mile uh, cross-cycle like gravel race in the fall. Mm. Are, like 
a, a com- competitive one or a just Ryan uh, bikes 50 miles day? There's like a lot of places that'll like, I mean, I guess define competitive, like, like an organized yeah, they're thing like where or- someone wins. Yeah. They're like organized events and you get a number and okay. there's stops along the way for like food and bathrooms and you like go like trails and roads and gravel and all that shit. So, so that's what, like a f- four to five hour affair? Probably about a five hour bike. Yeah. Depending on, it's closer to five if you're doing true cross cycle because you're doing like gravel and hills and shit like that. Mm, if you were doing just sure. straight road, it'd probably be closer to four. But anyway, I'm trying to get my healthy on, bro, for the first like real time in my whole life. Hell yeah. I'm trying to do something good for myself. <laughs> As of today, I've worked out 14 consecutive days. Ooh, ooh. Yep. Can you donk yet, bud? My what? Can you donk yet, oh. bud? <laughs> What do you think I asked you, bruv? I heard getting your donkey, and then I couldn't figure out what the last word was because- Are you, are you building that donk, bruv? <laughs> I was like, I mean, yeah, it's going okay. How's your juicy booty coming along, Spence? Do you have one yet? Pop it for the listeners. Let them hear your donk. <laughs> yeah. Make your booty clap for the listeners. New year, new booty. I found you, <laughs> Mr. New Booty. Get it together, then bring it back to me. Uh, yep. What the fuck? Only we could spend a minute and a half hmm. on just mess hearing something real dumb. Ryan, I, whatever. We haven't talked on this show in a while. We got updates, y'all. Well, first of all, first of all. Yep. First. We're getting back in. First, first, We're getting back into it. Primarily, primarist, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Master P now lives in the same state slash maybe city as us. Yeah, bro, I hung out with his son the other night. Uh, pardon me. Well, I didn't hang out with him, but I watched him oh. play basketball for a while. <laughs> oh, did you go to that game? I went to both nights. There, wait, huh? Uh, so for those that don't know, ESPN decided <laughs> Which is me apparently. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody listening. ESPN decided to do a high school basketball showcase in our fair city mm. uh, last Friday and Saturday night. So Friday night, uh, a local school called Miniha Academy uh, hosted two games. And then at the Target Center, there was another game the following night. And uh, yeah, so Hersey Miller, believe it or not, Master P's name is Percy. Mm-hmm. Percy Miller, which is why he is Master P, Master Percy. Right. Yep. Decided to just change the first letter of Percy to an H and named his son Hersey. H e r c y. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of what what letters would have been better, or if there are any. I mean, Bercy, Bercy, Tercy, Tercy, Versy. He's a rapper. It should have been Versy. Cersei. Is his kid a rapper? He's got to be, right? I no. I mean. If you grew up with your dad being Master P, you ra- you have rapped a little bit in your life. Probably. There's a distinct chance. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I know... Mercy. But I know he balls. Mercy. Mer- Mercy would have been pretty strong. No, he <laughs> balls, dude. He's really fucking good. Master P played in the NBA for a minute. I know, dude. Which is crazy. That, that is that's crazy. true. Uh, so he's a Minnesotan now, huh? He's a, so he's a Minnesotan because his youngin's, youngin's here and, and Why? whooping. What do you mean? This kid goes to Minnehaha? This kid goes to Minnehaha Academy. Why? Because it's a super nice, super expensive private school, and they recruited him here to hoop, and yeah, he's going like, to go to the league. There are hundreds of those in the country. Why this one? Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know about hundreds of like top basketball schools. I mean, Minnehaha Academy won the state championship three years in a row. Yeah, but we're not exactly a basketball state. Yeah, but I'm just saying we're, you know, we're top 50 schools in the country, if you think of it that way. Mm, maybe. I mean, roughly. Huh. Well, yeah, I don't know. Moral of the story is maybe he's got fam here, bro. Master P's kid goes to school like less than a mile from where we are right now. And also, Master P is near us, and we can feel his aura of dopeness just, just slowly, you know, cursing its way through the mm-hmm. veins of our city. Make him say "ope." Make him say "ope." <laughs> na 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 na. God, that would be awesome. Uh, we're making that T-shirt. That has to be real. Uh, we have like a billion email mm, voicemails. You guys, we're getting back into the swing of things. <laughs> really <struggling. okay? laughs> we're stone cold sober too. Maybe that's actually the problem. Maybe we should be more drunker to make First it happen. We drink, then we think <laughs> it's not the other way around. 
The thinking goes a little smoother when there's a little uh, grease on the wheels, if you will. Were there specific ones that you wanted to listen to? Uh, no, it was more like I had gotten so many emails in the past three weeks of voicemails mm-hmm. that I was like, people probably think we don't listen to these anymore or play them. And I feel like a couple of them were pretty uh, pretty solid and we should give some people uh, some airtime. All right. Well, let's try this one. All right. Happy New Year, boys. This is Bear. Hey! <laughs> I wish you nothing but health, wealth, and happiness in 2020. Likewise, and, Bear. And uh, you got a lot of people pulling for you. And, people pulling uh, for you, man. Just keep doing what you're doing, boys. You'll be just fine. Happy New Year, Ryan. Happy New Year, Spencer. And Happy New Year to all those people on the What If group. You guys are the greatest. Good night. Hell yeah. Dad Good night, boy. Bear. Fuck yeah. God. I What a my, guy. Like, I had a good day, and my day sincerely just got so much better <laughs> with that voicemail. I fucking love it, man. Happy New Year from Bear to all of y'all and all of us. I freaking love it. This one looks much less wholesome. A lot of things are bleeped out. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> Other direction. Oh, holy shit. This actually works. What's up, guys? It's uh, Kai from Ontario. <laughs> Uh, I was just, I'm on my way to work over the wind isn't too bad. Nope. I was listening to uh, your podcast episode. It was the uh, What If the Government Knew About UFO? Mm. And you guys were talking about uh, the that that Tudor Stars Academy bullshit. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out that fucking guy <laughs> who said he was worked as a spy for the U.S. government. And you all these spies and all that shit. Yo, pause it quick. Piss me off so fucking much. <laughs> Can we get this fantastically Canadian gentleman saying, that fucking guy, and have that be a drop forever going forward? God, that was good. Yes. That fucking guy? Was so good. All right. Uh, I assume he's talking about Lou Elizondo. That would be my guess. Is he talking about Lou Elizondo, or is he talking about the dude that uh, Tom claimed fucking pulled him aside in an airport Denny's or whatever and was like, hey, man, Mm. we want you to work for us. And Tom was like, cool, man. Sounds good. I doubt he's (laughs) saying that that guy is pissing him off, though, because we don't know who that person is. That person has never been named. Mm. You know how fucking dead you would be (laughs) if you just pranced around telling everyone you worked as a spy for the U.S. government for like 30 years? (laughs) Like, that is the <laughs> swiftest death request. <laughs> Anyways, I just had to get that off my mind. Uh, yeah. I'm going to call you guys later. Leave some uh, Canadian spooky stories. All right, talk to you later. Peace. Do it. <laughs> you didn't. Do it. <laughs> Do it, coward. <laughs> I want to see if I can grab that. Uh, that, that fucking, fucking guy. guy. That, uh, to the, that to the stars academy bullshit. Um, I just wanted to point out that fucking guy. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> that fucking guy. <laughs> also, uh, sw- the swiftest death request. Put it on the list. Yes. <laughs> Let- yes. That is for sure our new emo band. The swiftest <laughs> death request. Yeah. I, I'm i trying to remember who else is on that fucking team of goofballs over there. There's I- the Department of Defense tall guy. <laughs> well, you got the short, thick guy, and you got the tall, skinny guy. Sure, and then it's you got Tom DeLonge. It's on his business card there short, at the guy. Stars Academy. <laughs> Lou Elizondo, aka Mister Thick Neck, <laughs> Thick Boy, Thick Boy Neck. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> yep, that's what we well, reduced right. them to. <laughs> uh, let's just keep going. Yep. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Melissa from Northern California. Hi, Melissa. Um, I just listened to the Hailing on Harry Potter episode on the Patreon. Oh, yep. And Ryan said that he's never really watched any Daniel Radcliffe movies. So true. here's one that you guys should watch, preferably stoned, because it's freaking awesome. Sweet. It's called uh, Ho- yeah, Swiss Army Man. Sorry, I'm pretty stoned myself right now. Uh, Swiss Army Man. You need to watch that right now. Right it's now? so fucking funny. All right, okay. guys. Thanks. Well, back thanks, Melissa. Right All right. She said right now. We <laughs> Look, if you give us a command via voicemail, we fucking do that thing. Swiss Army Man. Yep. I've heard mm. of it. I have not seen it. Um, I'll watch it, Melissa. I'll report back. 
This one has the word slam or the word slam poetry in it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yo, this is Adam. Please don't play this live. Oops. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> Next. So, so Google says, no, this is Adam. I don't play bass live, mm. which is why I missed M- missed that, that request. request. Never mind. Next so, one. Sorry, Adam. Uh Oh, this says a lot of... Yeah, well, here we go. Guys, it's Travis from Georgia. What up, and Travis? I know I'm a couple weeks behind, but I just want to say thank you. Fucking, I was just listening <laughs> to the Patreon, and you guys were talking about that show, Hell Here. And everybody mm-hmm. I talked to is like, oh, that show's amazing. And I'm like, dude, no, that show fucking sucks. <laughs> that fucking dude in the beginning is like... Oh, man, he's talking about synchronicities, and he's like, well, the synchronicity led me to this. I'm like, no, dude, the random coincidence that has nothing to do with anything, that just schizophrenic ass to whatever the fuck else. And uh, I just want to I just want to kick them all in the pussy. That's all I got to say. As you guys <laughs> God damn, he the hates it. Love the show. Keep up the good work, and um, yeah, bye. Thanks, but I need you to calm down about twelve percent there, Travis. <laughs> Look, man, let's he's, not he's let's pissed. not assault anyone, let's not <laughs> diagnose anyone because of their TV show. But I, you know, but also we can rip their their TV show all we want, and we have, and we'll do it again. Uh, before we get into this week's episode, I was gonna say we did get one very interesting email recently, and I was wondering if we should recount it or if we should wait. I don't know which one you're referencing, so you're gonna have to make an executive decision over there, uh, Mr. Seagal. N- no, I'm gonna. We got one very oh. specific email. Ah, yeah. Should we wait till we deal with something with that email? Well, now you brought it up. Eh. <laughs> Go for it. Well, all right. So. I'm bringing it up because I think y'all are going to find it interesting. Uh, We got a specific email, and we want to know what y'all's feedback is on whether or not we should uh, indulge it, I guess, is maybe... uh, Was that the right term? Sure. Okay. Um, We received a message from the director. Director, right? Director, editor, dude who made uh, Missing 411 The Hunted... You, you doing okay over there, bud? No. You got your hands in the air like you you just might care. I do care. I'm, I care because I'm friggin' pissed, bud. My What's... Well, my emails aren't opening now. Oh. Well, would you like me to read the email? Would you like to read the email that I'm referencing, Spencer? Sure. Okay, because my email doesn't want to do the thing that it's supposed to do. So the person who we, we talked a while back about, uh, the David Pleitus film... I guess documentary uh, missing four one one the hunted, and it was our m- most recent and also we decided last what if you disappeared episode. Yeah, and we got an email from uh, the person who directed and edited, and he said, "quote and everything else that film." Yeah, uh, and the I guess the synopsis is. He listened to our episode about it. Okay, which first of all kind of tripped me out because I never really thought any of that shit we talked about would make it back to the people who made that movie. Uh, If you... I haven't looked in a while, but if you... uh, Maybe a year ago or so, if you searched David Politis on most of the podcast apps... We were the first thing that came up. uh, Not first, but like we were, you know, we showed up. We're up there. So... I'm sure they're keeping track of, you know, who's talking about the film and press and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I have it up now. Do you want me to read it? I, yeah, sure. Okay. He, he goes, uh, I just wanted to reach out and say I listened to your podcast on the movie. You guys are very engaging. I really like your voices, your chemistry, and all your topics. And then he wrote, I'm surprised by how few listeners you have. Now, that shit is hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> like too short to be messed up. Oh, uh, uh, that shit was hilarious to me because I'm like, hey, bro, we have a shitload of listeners, and B, you have no idea how many we have. So why, like, why is that your take? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously he's taking a shot, 
But then based on... Which we've earned because we took a bunch of shots at them, so... <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I just... It's a weird opening shot. Yeah, yeah, Because you don't yeah. actually know that. The only other thing I could think of was sometimes we joke about few lis- how few listeners we have, and I oh. wondered if we made a joke in that episode at the beginning of, like, all 12 of you or something like that, and he, like, took that as serious. Hmm. But I did kind of hope it was a dig, because I was like, all right, I'll, like, let's go. Yeah. Uh... He, but this is what I found most interesting. He said, I feel like you're fairly off with your assessment of the movie and David's intent, but we're all allowed our opinions and yours is easily the most entertaining and candid as I've heard. I do hope you guys realize that what David is doing with the can missing does help families of the missing. Nobody's forcing them to contact us or go on camera. How? How what? How does it help? That's my first question. Well, right. Keeping their loved ones in focus actually gives them some control over a situation they've never had control over. It allows them to share their story and keep their loved ones alive. If you listen without such bias, you'll repeatedly hear family, SAR, and LE, oh, law enforcement, I don't know what SAR is, oh, search and rescue, and LE say the circumstances are outside any logical explanation. Your podcast kind of leads a listener to believe those sentiments only come from David. Each case is built around their testimony, not his. As for Sierra, Sierra Camp and Predator, dot, dot, dot. Hmm, dot, dot, dot. (laughs) Yes, it is reasonable to question the motivation of inclusion, but our goal was to show stories about Doorsman experiencing the unexplainable, and I tried very hard to make certain those stories were not answering why people go missing. This was very clearly worded throughout. It absolutely wasn't. I feel like he watched the film with heavy disdain for David, and that's unfortunate. Look, so the only thing I want to say in response to that last piece, our, our goal was to show stories about Doorsman experiencing the unexplainable. Which either A, you acknowledge in that sentence has nothing to do with the rest of the film. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are, are you just reacting to his email on the podcast? Kind of. Okay. Because you said you wanted to get the listeners feedback on something. I don't really want to just like respond to this dude's email that we haven't actually responded to that's on fair. the podcast. All right. That's fair. I'll, I'll keep the rest of my thoughts to myself. Uh, the last thing he said was, uh, I wish you the best getting new listeners as I do really do think you guys are great. If you'd ever like to have me as a guest, I'd definitely consider it. So what we want to know is, do you guys want us to have him on the show? Cause if you do, we'll have him back and we'll do a, what if you disappeared interview with this guy who directed missing Four One hunted. And I think we would have a very good and civil conversation if it's something you guys want to listen to, but we also don't want to do it. If you guys are like, now nah, we're over that stuff. So send us an email. Hi, what if podcast.com or leave us a voicemail, six, one, two, two, four, six, four, six, one, four. Um, if y'all want it. And if we get some, some positive reactions, uh, we will invite Michael on the show and we'll, like I said, we'll have some, some back and forth about some of the points he made and some of the stuff I was about to start talking about. And uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, all in all, interesting email and interesting that I guess our shit makes it around sometimes, which is kind of cool. All right. Weird shit's happening in Colorado. Let's talk about it. More than Colorado, right? Well, yeah. Take me there because you read a lot more of this than I did. So this was first reported on the 23rd of December, 2019. Um, It's a recent one. In the Denver Post or by the Denver Post. And what they're reporting is a group of at least 17 drones, although I've seen it as high as 30 uh, in eyewitness reports elsewhere. Is it always a group? Yes. It's never singles. I don't think so. Uh, 17, possibly as many as 30 drones, each with about six foot wingspans flying over Phillips and Yuma counties in Northeast Colorado every night since December 17th. Goddamn. Yeah. So at the time of the initial reporting, it had been six consecutive nights and then it continued uh, for a while after that. And as far as I can find, it is still continuing on a nightly basis. Damn. Like legit a nightly basis. Yeah. And at, and approximately the same time every night, uh, usually between sunset, which is around, I think, five o'clock ish these days and uh, 10 p.m. So they're coming out some somewhere between like five and seven p.m. and then gone by about 10 p.m. each night. So are they like are they are they I know they're moving. I was going to say, are they moving as in like. Are they hovering in a location where people can gather and see them still, or are they like 
tracing like a path across the sky. Like so, what's the what's the deal? Yeah, they they've been estimated to be about two hundred to three hundred feet off the ground, and they're flying in this like square pattern for the most part, <laughs> as if it were a so they'll fly like a square and then move over and fly another square and then move over and fly another square as if they're maybe searching for something. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, according to the Phillips County Sheriff, Thomas Elliott, quote, they've been doing a grid search or a grid pattern. They fly one square and then they fly another square. Um, what's weird, so they were. this was initially reported or initially seen and reported over Phillips and Yuma counties. It's now been reported over a larger area uh, and into southern Nebraska and parts of southeast Wyoming as well. Um, But those two counties combined have 14,000 people living in them. So this is a pretty rural rural area. And not an area you would typically expect to see six foot wingspan drones by the dozens. So that was a specific detail that kind of blew me away was like, you know, we've all seen drones before. I mean, whether you see them like at the park or like whatever at an event, Mm -hmm. but like the biggest one I think I've ever seen was like one of the ones they fly inside of stadiums to do like fan cams and shit like that. Yeah. And it was probably, I don't know, maybe like three feet across tops. Mm -hmm. Six is like, like that's a big wingspan. That's like my wingspan. Yeah. Can, can you buy a six foot? I mean like, so by the, you, I mean the proverbial, can anyone just go uh, buy a six foot wide? Is that even legal to fly a six foot wide wingspan drone? I mean, like, I don't. Yeah. So, uh, short answer. No, not really. The, the no, most, you can't most, or no, it's not legal. Most commercially available drones are smaller than that. Got it. The other part is that if they're in the air for three to four to maybe five hours, there are no commercially available drones that have flight times that long. Oh, sure. The average is like 20 to 30 minutes for most. Yeah, right, because you gotta you got to have a hell of a fuel source to be keeping you af- Mo- afloat for that long. Most of them are battery-powered, and they last about 30 minutes tops. And think about what the output of that battery has to be to keep a six-foot wingspan one of those motherfuckers up. So they're probably not battery-powered. Yeah. There are, uh, like, basically jet engine drones that exist, but... That's a real thing? Again, not commercially. Yeah, for, like, military basically that's crazy um and i don't yeah so short answer no they don't appear to be the type of drones that are commonly owned by people both because of the size and because of the flight time right unless people are seeing you know seeing it seeing them in the air for 20 minutes and then seeing a different one for 20 minutes and then a different one for 20 minutes all over the same area. Yeah. I guess if they were like charging and launching them in, but people have, people pattern. aren't reporting that they're seeing, yeah. you know, one, one person reported seeing one hover over one spot for like three hours. Oh, so some of them are separate from the group. Yeah. Which we'll, we'll get into that and how it confuses the situation even more. Yeah. Um, more just like base level stuff. They have red, green, and white lights on them. And is that so, standard for for drones in general? I think it's required, yeah. Okay. The, part of what gets really confusing with this story is that there's not a whole lot of, there aren't a whole lot of laws on the books yeah. about drone flight still. And it's still developing and like, especially the specifics of size and, uh, you know, what, needs to be cleared with the FAA and what areas right. are allow allow drones at all and et cetera, et cetera. I, I did wonder, sorry, just really quick about like the regulation stuff. There was, um, there was a quote in one of these articles. Um, it was shit. 
Oh, it was Sheriff uh, James Brugman from Perkins County, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he saw the the drones on patrol this last Tuesday night and said, in terms of aircraft flying at night and not being identified, this is a first for me personally. He said he had heard rumblings about people wanting to shoot down a drone and had urged residents <laughs> to report the sightings to law enforcement instead. I think it's kind of a joke, but you have to remember the part of the country we live in. The sheriff said people here don't like their privacy being invaded. Yeah. Now, the question that I had was, it. it I mean, and I know you said the regulations aren't really there, but I guess that's my question is like, how is that not a crime for you to be flying over my house or my property and ostensibly taking photos or readings of some kind? Because the airspace above your property is not your property. But if you were, you know, if you, if you flew, if you flew a drone right now out of your backyard and went like looking in your neighbor's dining room window with a camera on it, like that's not legal either. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely not legal. If you're not on their property, it is. I can stand in front of your house on the sidewalk with a camera and take photos of your house all day. But if you're, but if you're, if you have a drone that's like hovering outside of a window, there are that's, no laws that prevent that. That can't be true. Is that not part of peeping tom laws? It has to be. That's fucked up. Yeah. If that if that's true, that's fucked up. Um, the FAA told the sheriff's office in uh, this is uh, which sheriff Phillips County. Um, that it had no information on the drones, and the U.S. Air Force also said that they aren't theirs. A spokesperson for the DEA told the Denver Post that the drones aren't operated by them. A spokesperson for the FAA said that the agency has no information on them. And they also said that drone pilots aren't required to file flight plans unless they're flying in a controlled airspace, like around an airport. So that, the FAA is basically saying, we don't know, and also, they're not required to tell us. Damn. And the Air Force is saying, not ours. DEA is saying, not ours. The so, U.S. Army Forces Command spokesperson also said that they were not aware of any training involving military drones in the area. Because there are, uh, the first speculation with this is there are a lot, there's a big military presence in this part of Colorado. Sure. There are nuclear missile silos in this part of Colorado. Um, so I, a lot of people jump to, well, these appear to be like military type drones or at least not commercially available like right, to right. the public drones. There are military bases in this area that they're probably related. Right. And at least officially, the Air Force and the Army and the DEA is saying, no, they're not ours. And we don't know of anybody else doing this stuff. I wonder, like, is it somebody who's just trying to make a point? Like, if I do this, they'll have to make regulations about this shit because Would everyone... you need that many? Because here's the other thing. A six-foot wingspan drone that can stay in the air for three to four hours is going to be really expensive. Well, that was one of the things I had written down I mean, just after reading through this article quick was like... How how many dollars worth of drones has got to be in the air? A hundred thousand plus. It's got to be even more I mean, than that, right? I mean, if you're talking about like the commercially available ones are like, you know, a couple grand. I mean. DJI, DJI's or like whatever. You, you can buy a drone for a hundred dollars probably on the very cheapest end, but yeah, you but can I also mean, like, spend 15,000 on one. Right. And I'm just thinking like if there's sightings of 30 of them at a time and we're talking six foot wingspans yeah, and mean, like battery or whatever power that's like keeping them up there for hours. I think each one of these is five figures minimum. Right. And you have 17 to possibly 30 of these. I mean, you're talking it's gotta be 300 grand 400 say, grand i mean even if they're 10 grand each which i think is a very low estimate you're at 170 to 300 thousand yeah i feel like it's got to be closer to it's like probably more like to double a, that yeah. 500 to a yeah. million yeah, yeah for sure so i don't think it would be that unless right. it's a, a corporation trying to push legislation but i don't know why they would yeah. no less legislation is almost always better for corporations right Unless it fucks somebody else, but 
even then. So just going a little deeper into what we actually do know or what people have tried to figure out. Um, there are some, uh, rules, I guess, maybe not laws about that. The FAA has for drones, um, drones that weigh less than 55 pounds. Um, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Drones that weigh less than 55 pounds can be flown during daylight hours within sight of the pilot and no higher than 400 feet off the ground, not, and not over people. Okay. So that's like, so there are rules about you couldn't fly a drone near somebody's windows. I mean, I think not specifically. No. Well, I'm saying like if if those are if those are laws related to drone operation, mm-hmm. if you, I mean, unless you were literally like standing in your fence, in inside of it, but even then you're over people because you're over someone's house. I mean, if we in, interpret this, and I don't think we need to get caught up on this part of it, but no, I don't. If if we interpret that literally, I could as long as I can see the drone, I could fly it right up to your house. Yeah. Yeah. If it's during the day. Sure. Um, however, I guess, I guess the, the only reason I'm stuck on it is because I'm trying to go like, this seems extremely illegal. So it's either the government or a corporation doing something super fucked up that they're going to get fucked for really hard. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm stuck on. Is I, don't, it just seems- I don't think it is obviously super illegal. I think that's, that's part of the, the problem. Got it. All right. Keep going. Unless you know something that I don't. Uh, however, pilots can apply for and receive waivers from the FAA that exempt many of those rules, exempt them from many of those rules. Sure. Um, but I guess it's also, this is from the Denver post article. Just one more thing. It's also not clear whether the drones over Phillips and Yuma would be governed by these regulations. Okay. A drone of the size being reported would likely weigh more than 55 pounds. However, that means that the drone operator would be flying, quote, commercially and would likely need to be a, quote, manned aviator, a.k.a. an actual pilot. <laughs> Which brings in a whole bunch more weird wrinkles. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Because it also seems impossible to me that someone is within visual range of these things if they're being reported over like a 25 mile area. There's no way. And they're not being linked. No one is is reporting seeing people on the ground near them. No one is reporting seeing them land. The, The other thing about it that like, and I don't know enough about drones to know this, but you know with these things flying in a pattern like that, like if they're all staying a certain amount away from each other, it seems like there would have to be a relatively complex guiding mechanism. Like this is not just like a guy on the ground with a remote control going like, like fucking whirring this little thing around. Right. Like, well, I don't know what the guiding system would be, but it seems like it would require a lot more software, a lot more effort, a lot more like individuals in general. Right. It's not, this isn't just a dude. It's, got to be a lot more organized yeah yeah like to do that and well and then if we follow the logic of something this big that can stay in the air for this long probably weighs more than 55 pounds right and yeah and did that that's a safe assumption i totally i mean uh, larger than six feet what would that thing have to be made out of if its wingspan was six feet and then what's what's powering it because that if it's if it's fueled that is going to Four hours Man, worth of fuel. That's heavy. Or four hours worth of battery life. If that's a heavy. Huge battery, which I don't, as far as I know, and as far as what's commercially available, there is no battery powered drone that lasts that long aside from a solar powered drone. And these are only being flown at night. Right. So this thing is probably fueled it's six feet across. I think the odds of it being, the probability of it weighing less than 55 pounds is very low. Was that law saying that if it is if it does weigh more than 55 pounds it has to be a manned drone? Yes. 
No way. So then, and that's what I'm getting at, if they're then following the law about this, that means if there are 17 of these things in the sky, you have 17, (laughs) not just 17 people, 17 licensed pilots. All in the sky together. Because it's considered a commercial aircraft. So and, a, and a very specific licensed pilot for that matter, because most of your licensed pilots know. that are, I'm just saying like most licensed pilots that are flying Cessnas and 747s and shit aren't just like, oh yeah, I'll just go like steer a drone around. Like it can't be the same. I have no idea. Mechanisms. I mean, it's not the same cockpit. It's not the same. You don't take off and land the same. Like, well, I'm not saying that there's someone in these because that, that would just then be an airplane. I'm saying that you have to have someone on the oh. ground controlling it who is a licensed pilot. Got it, dude. I was so tripped out. I thought you I thought you literally meant this was like people like these had to be like I'm thinking of the fucking Uber taxi shit where it's like the have you heard about Uber's testing these like four uh f- like four fanned drone things where you can like get in the little bubble and it'll like take you to another place? Oh yeah. I thought it was like one of those things, like that mm. kind of man doesn't, you had to be on board and able to like fucking, I believe they're saying the operator has to be a pilot. Now I understand what you're saying. Cause that's an actual certification to be able to fly a drone properly. And you yeah. have to like be certified to do film shoots and like shit like that. So then you have minimum 17 people that are at individually one, ti- at one steering time. These? Yeah. Like simultaneously and more likely like 30 of these people. Right. Or you have a group of people or one person or somebody not following these regulations, which is definitely possible as well. Also, the fact that they're flying them from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. says uh, so the cover of night is a friend of yours but, while doing these things. But you have lights on all of them. Right. I think if you really didn't want people to see these, they wouldn't. But I mean more so like uh, you you can hide a lot of things while still being like it would be really bad for us if a low flying, you know, twin turbo airplane fucking crashed into one of these things or whatever. It just seems weird if, if we go down that road of they're not following the regulations and they're doing something covert and therefore doing it at night. Why bother to follow the regulation of having lights on on the wings, you know? I don't know. I guess I'm thinking like if you do it at night, there's the lights are there for safety, but you know, you're going to get seen, but like nobody can bust out, uh, you know, a telephoto lens during the day and like get really close and snap photos and get like logos or shapes or size. You know what I mean? Like you're at least you're hiding a little bit of your, uh, your material, if you will. While still like acknowledging, yeah, there's something up there, but you don't know enough about it to be able to like get identifying characteristics or get posted on the internet. And then all of a sudden it's who's seen this? Do you know what this is? So whatever, whatever. There are a couple of Facebook groups going about this. Perfect. And I jumped into one of them yes. to do a little recon. Yes. And one of the. Fr- is this all like, hey, people who live in this area, have you seen these things? What do you know? Or people who have seen them like come share information about it. Oh, boy. And one of the first posts I saw was from Linda Moulton Howe. No <laughs> way. She's on the case. No. This is it, like right in the area of where uh, all the cattle mutilation shit that she was like uncovering in the whatever that was late 70s early 80s that's kind of interesting right same part of the country oh yeah you did you say yuma county yeah northeast colorado yeah yeah that's kind of interesting um (laughs) some people have been this one's fucking weird man (laughs) hell yeah it is um people are posting i mean anything from like dumb memes to photos of you know one little dot in the sky to people talking about all sorts of other weird conspiracy theories well thanks to linda well they're coming for your cats <laughs> the drones are gonna cut your cats look nap. out they're gonna kidnap your kitty um i did however in this vi- in this Facebook group find the best video of them so far. Oh, lit. Let's watch it. If you want to. Uh, so this is somebody got like a fairly close up vi- video of it's just loud. It is. Yeah. Of just one of these things hovering in place over their house. 
I heard, and you can hear it's. A, the, I heard her say it's loud. Will you run yeah. that back one more time? Yeah. No, that's not. So you hear like what sounds like an airplane in the background. But, it, but wait, is that traffic going by? Is she like near a road? I. So she says, uh, "Here is a video. This was number two of thirty that flew directly over my house last night. Uh, this was now. Uh, this was this past Sunday. So Saturday night the." whatever that would have been fourth, third. Um, you can hear it between our exclamations. I can try and get a better one if they are back tonight. So I think she's saying that sound that sounds like a, is it a jet is this drone? No, that's not that sound. That's a bunch of crap. It's loud. It is. Yeah. It's a bunch of crap. Interesting. Yeah, this Facebook group. Uh, there's no dude. This with the sound that that's making. There's no way that thing's battery powered. It's also it's n- making way too much sound. Yeah, it's also not totally clear. To be fair, from that video, that that's not just an airplane going over her house. Uh, there's no context. It's just a black background. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, it th- appeared very stationary. Yeah, but so can a plane from a, a distance. And if you're, especially if you're, but that's not a very it. far distance. Like, you how can would see, you know? There's no, there's but nothing you can else see on the some screen. De- you can see some kind of definition of the drone when the lights flash a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's it feels that feels close enough to me that like you would know. I'm sh- yeah, she would probably know. I'm just saying we. Just from that video, it's not clear. Yeah, yeah with her yeah. saying, then also this is a drone. Yeah. Okay, but doesn't do a whole lot if a stranger on the internet says something is true. You yeah, know? Uh, this group is called Drones Over Northeastern Colorado on Facebook. Um, it's it gets pretty weird in here. <laughs> Lots of I just tin, saw. A, I think memes. you're an asshole meme. Mm-hmm. So that's a good start. Just showed the UPS guy what to look for. We stood out in the yard for 10 minutes looking at drones. Okay. Many drones over Southeast Lincoln, Nebraska right now. Many drones, bro. (laughs) So I guess what I'm getting at is there are a lot of people now over like a pretty big area claiming to have seen these things. Yeah. And offering varying degrees of proof of seeing these things. Right. Um, Oh, shit. Yeah. These are photos from somebody. What the fuck is this? That appears to be... I don't know what this thing is. Those are stars in the background. Oh, yeah. Those are stars. Got it. Where? What's your best guess where sleeper cells are? Okay, buddy. Jesus. Has anyone seen drones today? All, all caps, caps. 21 minutes ago. Good Lord. 18 drones, straight line coming from the west, northwest to the east, east, southeast. Just went over my house. York, Nebraska, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 feet up. Spaced apart about 500 feet. Is that a video from that same person? Yeah, but not, they're all terrible because it's like night cell phone video for all yeah. of them. Like, this is just a black rectangle. <laughs> uh Okay. There, there's that first video I showed you is by far the best one mm. out of anything I could find. I'm honestly a little disappointed there isn't better video with the volume go, that this go appears try and to be. Shoot something hundreds of feet away at night with your phone, though. It's, it's I mean, almost impossible. I completely agree, but I'm saying now that this has been in the news multiple times, like how are there not news crews that are out there with way nicer equipment and way more dedicated staff trying to like get a decent video? Even with a good thing? camera, it would be tough. Get something like, I mean, you know those those news stations have access to some sort of like night vision or infrared or like whatever. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I guess you're kind of rural. You're not like in a big city. Yeah. I just, it seems like that would be the very next logical best step for a lot of people is to be like, right. can we get some good documentation of what this thing is so you can start going 
this is directionally where it's headed. This is now so, that it's on sticks, we can get speed of it. Like we can get better readings on size. Like it just seems like proper documentation would answer a lot of questions. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It It is weird how little information there still is, even with like some pretty big, like the New York times ran an article about this. Yeah. And it's that's get- the one that I, I read the, that quote from the article in the times was called it's creepy. Unexplained drones are swarming by night over Colorado. Yeah, it's getting national coverage, and yet we have no photos, no video, other than like cell phone shit in a Facebook group that doesn't totally appear to be what people are describing. There's literally an FAA investigation going on right yeah. now. Like, how is that not producing right evidence based documentation? Um, one thing on that the quote that that New York Times uh, headline is from. Yeah, there's someone named Missy Blackman. Um, who lives in Palisade, Nebraska, who, so she, she said, the, the quote from the article is, it's creepy, said Missy, who saw three drones hovering over her farm outside Palisade, Nebraska on a recent evening, including one that lingered right above her house. Mm. She said she looked at them through binoculars and did not see any markings, just plain silver and white coloring. Mm. So, hmm. One of the leading or and leading in my mind theories on this that I've seen so far is there there's a ton of military presence in this little tri state corner there. Right. Including nuclear missile storage. Right. Um Someone suggested, I think I first saw it in that Facebook group that we were just talking about, that if something were to get lost, this might be a pretty reasonable response to it. As in, if an employee ran out the door into the night with a suitcase that they're not supposed to have kind of thing? No, more like um, if a if another aircraft went down... Or if something fell off of an aircraft, oh. or something was lost out in this very flat, very rural area mm. that was stationary. So not like a person went missing or, you know, something mobile. Yeah. You're looking for something that is going to be in one location. You don't need to put people on the ground. Yep. Once you have checked an area you can move on right so it would make sense to do like a grid pattern right if you've cleared an area you move to the next one sure it would maybe make sense to do it at night so that you're not alarming people particularly if you are using something like infrared or something like that where you might be able to like determine shapes or temperatures or things like that better or if it's a nuclear something i'm sure there are ways of reading that of signal. finding that that don't require visible light sure um it might make sense to do this at night it might make sense that you would still try and basically follow regulations sure but also cut some corners if you needed to and also nobody would acknowledge what was going on because and, they'd be going yeah we we don't know anything about it because they're all trying to keep secret that the, the fact that they lost or broke or whatever. if you ask the air force Hey, what's going on? They're not going to say, uh, we dropped a nuke in a field. Oops. Right. They're going to say, I don't know. And then in a, in a week or two, it's going to stop and people will stop asking questions. And, and then and no one will ever talk. Maybe about a it year again. from now we'll be like, Hey, remember when there were drones over Colorado? That was weird. Yeah. No one will talk about it again. That's the closest thing to a, a reasonable explanation that I've come across so far. But I'm sure there are holes in that that I'm not thinking of also. Well, one thing I was just thinking was, you know, from, I know all the documentation is bad, but like, it looks like there's some pretty mixed reports about who's seeing them actually flying in a grid pattern and who's seeing like individuals going different directions. Yeah. And like when I I think before that, even though like who would have access to or the budget for 17 minimum 
drones like this. The, it's I mean, either the government or a big corporation or a huge company. That's the first thing I said was I was like, "There's that's the only two choices: is this either and, the government or a big corporation?" And what would a big corporation be doing out there? Well, especially at night. And then, wh- wouldn't it be way easier for them to just say, "Yeah, it's us," or to at least tell the FAA, "Hey." We're going to be out here for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Let's maybe not make a huge deal about this and have it be a national news story. Right. And also, once it becomes a national news story, why is it still going? Like, if you if you were a corporation that was doing something and you were like, yeah, we thought we were going to get away with something and this is creating a really big stir and, like, the FAA is investigating us right now. Like, maybe we should uh, cut it the fuck out. Or not even get away with something, but, like, maybe we're surveying land or maybe we're Well, that was one thing. That's one thing I was going to say was, like, using radar at night to survey land if you had an intention of being, like, hey, in these rural areas, like, maybe we want to buy you know, we want to buy 750 to a thousand acres and turn it into a fucking granite mine or some shit like that. But you don't want to tell the residents of that rural community that in nine months, you're going to be knocking on all their doors with paperwork that says, Hey, uh, we bought everything around this and we're turning it into a mine and here's two and a half million dollars to get the fuck out and never come back. So maybe like, wouldn't you go through the channels to keep that quiet on the front end though? As so in, that you don't have the FAA opening an investigation into what's going on? I would think so, yeah. But my only that's question That's way worse for you. My only question would be is the if if you have registered your plans with the FAA, is that public knowledge then? Can anyone go query that? Cuz why would you? What do you mean? You're saying once people notice them, then you would then you could go fu- go to some FAA website or or submit a request to some FAA department that says, "Who the fuck's flying over my house with these loud ass fucking six foot buckets every night? This shit's crazy." And then it comes back, "Oh, this is such and such geological surveying, blah blah blah, a sub department of coke refinery or fucking whatever." You know, like. But then what? I don't know. Then, it, then is that worse publicity for you? Because because a name is attached. Because to Because you have a name attached to it now, and then everyone knows, and then and then people create you know an organization or put up a big stink or whatever, and maybe you feel like if we do it roughly in the gray area of drone ownership, we can get away with getting the information we need without making you know our name attached to a big buzz. I'm. I don't think that's yeah, any well, any necessarily more likely than the one you're saying. I'm just saying if that were if it were a corporation that was funding it, I feel like that would be your that would be like that's what we're doing out here is doing yeah. some sort of assessment of the land for that purpose. Well, and then they also fucked it up then, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> now right. they've called way more attention to. I guess not. Well, we still don't know who though, so maybe maybe you can still get out of there and. Not have a name attached. You know, the other thing that we haven't talked about so far, which I think is sort of prudent, is like, if this were the Air Forces and they didn't want people to know it was theirs, they're just going to say it's not theirs. Like, the yeah, Navy exactly. the Navy and Navy Air, Spo- Air Force, whatever spokespeople they're would... They're not going to just tell the press what they're yeah, doing. Would yeah, would say, we don't know anything about them. Right. And then they would say... No, those... The FAA is looking into it, and the FAA has for sure already had a conversation with the Air Force that is, yeah, we're doing some shit out here, and we need you to pretend you're looking into it, and we also need you to fuck off. And they'll be like, cool, cool, teamwork. Mm -hmm. And like that's the that's that would be how that would go if it was something like that. There was an article uh, from Gazette that I I thought there was an especially – apt quote in it that says the air force isn't claiming ownership of the drones but they aren't exactly denying it either oh oh interesting do you have the air force statement like did they <sighs> did they actually put out a statement or was it just like from what i could a reporter talk to someone there yeah well, the the first thing i was uh referring to when i said that the air force said it's not theirs is from that first denver post article from the 23rd okay and they don't have a quote from anyone in the Air Force, in that article, it's their reporter Got saying it. the Air Force says it's not theirs. I heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to. Jesus, internet is just struggling tonight. Um, I'm trying to open this Gazette article again because I didn't have. I feel like I would have pulled an actual quote out of it if there was one. Yeah, but I want to double check. Um, their their conclusion is 
quote, while no one has taken responsibility and even the FAA has claimed ignorance, the answer could be a secretive Air Force program intended to keep prying eyes away from nuclear missile silos. So they're saying it's probably there. This is speculation on their part, but actually a like anti-drone program. As in, if we have these drones up here, we can spot other drones. So anyone who might want to come sneaking around nuclear missile sites with a drone to get act, to get information. Sure. We can uh, defend against that with our bigger ass drones. Sure. I, uh, let me... I guess. I, although it's just, it seems a little bit like, like, is that? What's necessary? Well, it's it is based on the fact uh, they state in this article, Air Force Global Strike Command um, has confirmed that it conducts counter drone exercises out of F. E. Warren Air Fa- Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is right in the area of excuse me where all this stuff is being reported. So. I mean, in terms of what's logical, it seems far more logical to me that what this probably is, is the Air Force got a new drone and there's either a plan to use them soon or they need to like get their existing drone pilots up to speed on them. And they've got anywhere between 10 and 30 of them out of that base. And depending on the night and who's available, they're running night drills to get these guys warmed up on how to use these drones. That seems like that's that's got to be the most likely explanation, right? Something like that, I would think, yeah. And then they would say, hey, what are you guys doing? And the Air Force would say, we have no know. idea because the fact that they just spent a shitload of money on brand new fucking jet fuel powered drones and they're letting 21 year olds out of the base figure out how to use them over people's homes is probably not the fucking like not the thing that they want the press to hear. Uh, the Gazette said F E Warren, the, the base didn't respond to an emailed question Friday on whether it's counter drone effort had anything to do with the recent sightings. Okay. So they're just going to ignore you and say, yes, Oops, went in our spam folder, I guess. Yeah. Uh, can neither confirm nor deny yes. our participation in... Uh, excuse me? <laughs> you can what? Um, so, yeah. I think I think that's probably about as close as we can get to an answer, and I bet we don't ever get a real answer, and no. this just stops soon. Yeah. When they get deployed. Or, yeah, when they're done to, doing whatever they're doing. To the war that's literally starting tonight. Well, uh, it's just that I think the, the thing for me that I still can't really wrap my head around is the size of the space. Like this is, this is three States, Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Like they're, they're really going places. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? I would hope so. I just mean like, you don't make something that can fly to stay in one place. No, but like to your point, I guess it's like, you know, most commercially available drones are small and can only fly for 20 minutes. And in 20 minutes, how far can you really go? Maybe like a half mile, maybe a mile, couple miles tops. These ain't that. Sure as fuck aren't. I just mean they, (laughs) it's pretty wild how sure as fuck they aren't that thing. If they're going, I mean, we got, we got to be talking about what's over a hundred, over a hundred miles. Uh, well, we don't know where they're originating or returning to either, though. It might not. You're assuming they're all coming from one place, which might not be the case. Yeah, I suppose that's true. As in, you're saying they could be lifting off in all those unique states that they are being seen in and yeah. just being hovering in the area. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah, that's true. I it's think fucking the, weird, man. The flight time is more indicative that like these are the size and the flight time is more indicative to me that these are not anything commercially available. If I saw one of those things, let's just say the woman's Facebook video that we saw, let's just say that is what it, she said it was. And that is a fucking drone hovering over her house. I'd want to shoot that fucking thing out of the sky too. <laughs> They're fucking creepy, man. It's a federal crime. It turns out. Turns out. So don't do it. I just feel like I completely understand the sentiment of being like, who are you? What are you doing? Because that's the other thing, too, is you don't know what they're doing. Right. 
You don't know if they're zooming in on your fucking license plate. You don't know if they're fucking... Looking at your cat's butt. Looking at your cat's butt in hopes that they can cut it in half. <laughs> you know? Oh, give me the butt half of that cat. You know, I always thought Linda Moulton Howe's theory was that the cats were cut in half, like, like through their midsection in half. I never thought about slicing them like a loaf of bread, you know, like right down the top in oh, half. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah, was like head, cross head. sections, like full body cross sections of the cats. Oh, right, right, right. I, I just, I'd always envisioned cutting them in half one way. Katie was suggesting it's more than the, one way to cut and get, cut a cat in half. I'm changing the saying. The other that. night, I, actually, I need to kill this music for a minute because I have a story. <laughs> story! Uh, I was trying to wrap up the episode and then I remember some, Katie and I the other night were watching Ancient Aliens with the sound off and just- uh, Oh God, doing do, your own commentary? Doing the, the voiceover for whoever was on the screen. Fantastic. And I started, uh, Linda Moulton Howe showed up. She was, it was an Antarctica, Pyramids Under Antarctica episode. Sure. And I started doing the, the voiceover for Linda and got on a, a little rant about cutting the cats in half. And Katie suggested that we need to make a t-shirt that is a cross-section- like a of a cat, very simple like illustration of a <laughs> cat that has been cut in half, uh, long the long way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The long way. And that then, was like the a version. side view, so you can see all the like goo bits and stuff in there. Mm. Or just put like you know an alien and a pyramid inside of it or something. Wait, should we do it? Where like the front side of the shirt is just a side view of a normal cat, but then the back side <laughs> is it cut in half and all yes. of the insides. Yes. Or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe the cut in half cats on the front and the normal cats on the back. And Linda Moulton Howe is riding that thing with a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's holding a trident. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I just got a text in all caps. that says, how dare you implicate me in your shenanigans <laughs> from my wife. Uh, I got to soundproof this room better. The wife can hear. All right. Um, all right, gang. Hey, happy new year. Thanks y'all for uh, letting us take a little break and coming back around. Uh, a couple quick housekeeping things. It's hi, what if podcast.com. If you do want to send us an email or 612-246-4614. If you want to send us a voicemail, uh, go to shop.whatifpodcast.com for the t-shirts we do have. No cat shirts yet, but that might change soon. Uh, t-shirts, posters for 50 bucks. We do shout outs on the show. If you want to shout out somebody, wish somebody a happy new year. Tell your buddy happy birthday. We'll do that for 50 bones. Uh, also, iTunes reviews. We're coming up on 500. If we get 500 iTunes reviews, we're doing our next live episode on the on the Facebook. I think should, this is such a dang neat show. It should be a good time. So uh, if you want to go leave one and keep it rolling, we'd love you for it. This Friday. Yes. Chuck Tingle is doing a live show in Minneapolis, and I know I'm going to be there. Dig it a day. It's at the Mixed Blood Theater, and there's still tickets available. I'm just plugging Chuck because I love Chuck. Yep. Go see that dude. Uh, I'll be hanging out if you want to say hi, and we can listen to him talk about whatever the fuck he's going to talk about. Hell yeah. All right. Love you. Bye. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.